Okay, so in this video, we are looking at rounds one through three. In particular, we're looking at search ad campaigns. <clears throat> and if you remember, search ad campaigns are when you are trying to target consumers who are searching for solutions online. So they go to a search engine and they type something out. So let's say one of your customer personas, back to school Mindy, types out college backpack. And this was also one of the keywords that you would put a bid in for in your search ad campaign. Well, let's think about this. Whether or not the ad that you try to display is going to be served or not is going to depend on ad rank. This is calculated based on your bid amount and quality score. All advertisers, regardless of their wealth, would love to pay less for the same ad exposure. So it's therefore important to understand how you can earn as high a quality score as possible. The quality score is based on three things. First, it's uh, based on expected click-through rate. So Google wants the click-through rate to be as high as possible because that's how it earns money. So if we earn a high click-through rate, then we will be rewarded with better ad placement. We can improve this by writing good ad copy and doing continuous A-B tests to keep improving that click-through rate. The ad relevance is primarily measured by the keywords found in the ad. So this means that you should incorporate keywords into the ad copy whenever possible. So the keywords that you selected should go into that ad copy. And also ad groups should be organized around a smaller number of keywords. So the less number of keywords that you put, then it's going to be easier for you to have high ad relevance, um, as opposed to having a huge long list of keywords, then it's going to be trickier to get that relevance in there. The other thing that affects quality score is your landing page experience. And this is where you're employing the principles of good web design. And so you should create a good landing page that is going to decrease bounces, right? You don't want somebody to come to your page and look around and think, hmm, that's not what I was expecting and walk off, right? So search marketers should remember to incorporate keywords into the landing page and create a different landing page for each ad group to make that landing page match the searcher's intent. Now, of course, there are trade-offs of effort and result that occur in search marketing. To keep ad relevance and landing page experience as good as possible, it means that you need to create more ad groups and more landing pages for the different groups of keywords that you care about. It would be a whole lot easier if we could just create one generic ad and one landing page for all keywords, but the results will not be as good. So you do need to work at selecting relevant keywords for relevant consumer personas and creating relevant landing pages for those ad groups and so forth. So let's go back to our example of the college backpack keyword. If our ad is shown on the SERP, then this will count as an impression. So impressions represent opportunities for someone to see your advertisement, and it's usually triggered by a relevant search term or keyword. It's essential to note that impressions only indicate visibility, not engagement. Someone might see your ad, but not necessarily pay attention to it, right? So if our ad uh, is shown on that SERP, Remember that impressions are the foundation of digital marketing funnels. In marketing, we visualize this process using a funnel where the top represents the awareness phase and it goes down into that interest, desire, and action. Without impressions, you can't have clicks or conversions. And while impressions are crucial, it's also awesome that they're free. So you're not actually charged for impressions. Instead, what you are paying for are clicks. And clicks are the next step in our marketing funnel. This represents genuine interest or curiosity from potential customers. So when a user clicks on your ad, it means that they found your content appealing enough to learn more. So if you have numerous impressions, but not many clicks, then this might suggest that your ad content needs to be fixed or needs to be adjusted. A key performance metric that ties impressions and clicks together is the click-through rate, CTR. 
This is calculated by dividing the number of clicks by the number of impressions. A general benchmark for a good CTR is around 3.2%. If your CTR is lower, then you might need to make your ad content more appealing. So what does happen after someone clicks on your ad? Well, they will land on your website or your landing page, specifically this page that you've designed for the ad campaign. And the objective on the landing page is conversion. So remember, conversion can mean various actions, such as making a purchase, signing up for a newsletter, filling out a contact form, clicking on another link to learn more, and so forth. The effectiveness of this step is measured by the conversion rate, and that is calculated by the total conversions divided by the total clicks on your ad. In other words, how many people took a desired action out of all the people who actually visited your landing page after clicking on that ad on the SERP. The typical conversion rate averages around 4.2%. So if your conversion rate is below this, it might be time to assess and improve your landing page's content and design. So when you go into your simulation rounds, you will be able to see your results and it will look something like this. When you're thinking about optimization, you want to look around at various different metrics and things. First, you want to reflect and make sure that you did know your audience. You really want to go dig deep into your customer personas and make sure that you really did understand their behaviors and their preferences. Put yourself in their shoes. Know your audience, tailor your ads to speak directly to them. If you were searching for a backpack, if you were Daypacker Tom, if you were back to school Mindy, what would you type in Google? And if you were putting in keywords that are not really relevant, then you need to revisit those and adjust. Second, if you're not getting enough impressions, so if you're thinking these are pretty low, then what you'll want to do is reassess your keywords. So you might need to actually add more relevant ones or refine the ones that you're currently using. If you, for example, have an ad campaign or an ad group and you had very, very little impressions, it might just mean that you didn't have enough keywords in that ad group. So make those adjustments, kind of look at the ones that were doing well and see why you think they may have been doing well. Next, make sure that you optimize your ad content. You want to look over these ad headlines, descriptions, and call to action statements to ensure that they are actually engaging, they are relevant, and they're including the keywords that you were trying to uh, entice your audience with. So, you know, you may, after seeing the results, start to notice some trends where, you know, some things are looking better than others, and you want to emulate the ones that did really well. If you have a low click through rate, then this means your ad content needs to be improved, okay? Uh, if you have low conversions, then you may need to improve your landing page experience because this is what uh, happens when they get into the, you know, they clicked on your ad, they land on your landing page, and if they go away and they don't convert, uh, then that's a problem with your landing page. So make sure that you have used the correct keywords that match the ad so that the users find what they're searching for on your landing page. Uh, and you may also need to make sure that you've selected the most relevant keywords for conversions. So for example, if you were using buy college backpacks, then this likely indicates a strong desire to buy the product and convert. So it might le likely lead to higher conversions than more awareness or information type keywords. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you are choosing the right design for your landing page. So connect your ads to the most relevant landing page and ensure that the promises being made in your ad are actually fulfilled on the landing page. If you are putting in your ad uh, that it's affordable and it's designed for active students, but your landing page has nothing to do with that, then it's not going to be effective. And finally, you want to also think about your budget. Right, so adjust your keyword bids if necessary, uh, keeping your budget in mind, because if you are spending less on certain keywords, then you can spend more on other keywords that need it, right? So don't overspend. Uh, if you're overspending or underspending, then you're going to have 
not these green stars on here. So take a look and scroll through all of your results and adjust as needed. All right, so now that we know what to expect in the metrics, let's take a look at the simulation again. So I'm showing here the simulation in round two. And just an FYI, how can you look at your results and start making changes? Well, you can look at results in a few places. So if you click up here where it says results, and then you select the round that you want to see the results for, then you will be able to scroll down and view by clicking on each ad. By the way, if this is not visible for you, make sure that you are using uh, Chrome or Firefox. And if it's not working, then make sure you go ahead and click that help button uh, from Stu Kent. So you can watch the results instructions to get a, an overview of how to look at this. But what you want to essentially check on are your performance indicators here. So if everything is excellent, then you don't need to make too many changes there. But if you're seeing only good or fair, then you want to scroll down and check on some uh, updates and strategies for improving either your bid quality, your ad relevance, or your page relevance. Okay. Uh, you can also see some tips for improving your ad strength. So it does talk about uh, you'll be penalized if you have spelling errors because this is going to um, hurt your credibility. It's going to penalize you if you are trying too hard to put your keywords in there. So don't overstuff keywords. You do need to make it actually make sense. It's also going to make sure that the uh, keywords are high quality, right? So you do want to have keywords that have uh, a high monthly search volume. It doesn't, you don't want something that's only searched once in a blue moon, you know, once a year or once, only one time a month by someone. You do want it to be popular enough that it's a keyword worth uh, bidding for. And also you want to check on the number of words that you have in your ads and so forth. So you can look at this to kind of check uh, and see how you're doing within each ad campaign and within each ad group, you can check all of these keywords. So that's one place, but you can also check it when you are in the actual round in Stukent. So if you click on campaigns, for example, uh, this one is not active yet because I haven't run the simulation, <clears throat> but if I see this one where I did my backpack search, I can click through and kind of see uh, how I'm doing in my budget and my CPC impressions and so forth. And I can adjust this by clicking the column options. So if I want to see anything else, I can go ahead and click them. I can unclick things and that way I'm able to see adjustments and make changes. I can also do that within the ad group section. So here I can adjust it. Keywords as well, I can adjust it. And even in my search ads. So you'll want to do that and check on key uh, performance indicators. You want to make sure that you are performing well and you'll want to make adjustments if not. So some ways you can make adjustments are you can pause the campaign or you can even pause um, ad groups, you can pause keywords, and you could even pause search ads. So you'll want to decide, you know, what is needing to be paused. You might not want to uh, pause a whole entire campaign, especially in these beginning rounds. But later on, as you start noticing that, hmm, you know, I'm getting uh, a lot more profits from this campaign than others, or hmm, I'm getting so much more revenue from this campaign, or I'm getting so much more impressions or click-through rate and so forth, then you may decide, you know what, I'm going to pause this one because I need to uh, allocate more of my budget on another campaign. You can also decide to make changes, not just by pausing or making it active, but by actually editing the campaign itself. So if you click on the little button there, click edit, you know, you could adjust your daily budget. Uh, you could adjust your CPC and so forth. These are usually done manually, so you, this won't make that much of a difference. Um, but your daily budget for sure is going to come in handy <clears throat> when you, um, when you go in later and you have multiple campaigns, then that's going to make a difference because 
you, you know, have right now I have $2,400 in budget and I'm spreading it across equally. But once I run that simulation, perhaps I find out that my backpack search campaign is much more profitable than my messenger search campaign. And if that's the case, then I might want to allocate more of my budget on the search campaign than the messenger campaign, uh, backpack campaign instead of the messenger campaign. So those are some things to think about as far as editing. I can again also make edits here so I can edit my ad group. I could select different keywords for each ad group. Um, I can also pause keywords. This is going to come in handy if I decide, hmm, do I have a good conversion rate or do I have good uh, profits from my keywords? So if I'm seeing you know, zero conversion rate, I'm seeing negative profits, then that's probably something that I might want to uh, pause. And if I'm seeing some of my ads, you know, one is performing significantly better than others, you know, here I have a higher conversion rate, then I might want to pause the other one and see if I can, you know, amp this one up by allocating more of my budget to this ad campaign and this search ad. So go through and make all of these adjustments as you see at each level and make sure that you click through and look at each of the metrics and review your notes so that you can get an uh, overview if you've forgotten any of these metrics so you can see what they mean and what are the implications of each. Good luck.